My name is Cameron Bailey. I'm the artistic director here at TIFF. I'm so glad to see all of you here for the international premiere of this film. We want to begin, as we always do, by acknowledging where we are, just taking a moment to remember that we are on the treaty territory of the Mississaugas of the New Credit, First Nation, and the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee, the Anishinaabe, and the Huron-Wendat First Nations. Uh, these people have been looking after this land for thousands of years, and we are very grateful to be working in this community. A reminder, we have a prize here at the festival. We call it the Grolsch People's Choice Award. It's a fun award because you all get to vote on it. And the way you do that is you go to tiff.net slash vote. You can do it on your computer. You can do it on your phone. Don't do it on your phone during the movie, even if you're loving the movie. And you think, this is the best movie I've ever seen. Wait until after, OK? But you go to tiff.net slash vote and vote for the Grolsch People's Choice Award. Big thanks to Fox Searchlight Pictures and to Rocket Science for providing us with the film. Great to have another Searchlight uh, uh, film here at the festival. They have been with us for many, many years. And they're celebrating an anniversary this year as well. So happy birthday to Fox Searchlight. You know, one of the things that people who watch films a lot and people who think about and write about and theorize about film will tell you that cinema is an art of time. That time is one of the things that really defines movies because they exist in time, uh, unlike paintings or other more kind of static art forms. But the passage of time is also what connects us to movies. Often it's by watching movies over and over again over time. It's by watching old movies where you know that the, the people in them have changed over time, as we all do, that really develops that emotional connection, that love of films that we have. And I am someone who grew up watching the movies of Robert Redford and of Sissy Spacek. And I've spent enough time with those actors, those legends, really, to have a deep connection, as I'm sure many of you have as well. And what I like about the film you're about to watch is that David Lowry understands how our love for movies exists in time, how our connection to our favorite stars exists in time, and he's made a film that recognizes that, that acknowledges that, and that pays homage to it. He's a remarkable filmmaker with a real gift for many different forms of cinema, his films include Saint Nick from 2009, Ain't Them Body Saints, which premiered at the Sundance Film Festival in 2013, Pete's Dragon, A Ghost Story, completely different films, which is amazing, and this his most recent film, The Old Man and the Gun. Um, I'm very pleased and honored that they have chosen to bring the film to Toronto and bring some of the cast uh, of that film to uh, present it to you. So please join me in welcoming the director of The Old Man and the Gun, David Lowry. Thank you so much. Thank you. Wow. Good evening and hello from the bottom of my heart, as they, or howdy, as I would say, because I'm from Texas. Um, I can't introduce the movie any better than Cameron has. That was very moving to, to hear and, and made me think about the movie we made. And so rather than talk about it more, I just want to say thank you to everyone at TIFF for you know, not only putting on such a wonderful festival with so many wonderful movies, but allowing me to come show this movie here. It's a real treat. I feel like as a film fan, as a film aficionado, I've spent my lifetime reading coverage from this festival every year. And so to finally be here and to show this movie here, it means a lot to me. And I want to bring out a few of the people who helped make this movie possible, including some of my you know, producing buddies. I've got uh, Jeremy Steckler back here, Jim Stern, Julie Goldstein, and Anthony Mastamaro, who really had my back making this movie. As they come out, I also want to thank everyone at Fox Searchlight, who has really helped bring this movie to fruition in a way that I wouldn't have been able to do on my own. And of course, I also wouldn't have been able to do this on my own without the amazing cast. So allow me to introduce Tika Sumter, Casey Affleck, Danny Glover, yeah. 
Sissy Spacek. And Robert Redford. So you're about to see this wonderful cast on the big screen, where they belong, but we will all be back here afterwards to talk about the movie, and I really look forward to discussing with you. So thank you so much for choosing this movie, for coming to see it tonight, and we'll see you in a little while. Ladies and gentlemen, the director of The Old Man and the Gun, David Lowry. Thank you all for sticking around. So we should just get to and bring out uh, Casey Affleck, Tika Sumter, Danny Glover. Sissy Spacek. And Robert Redford. I'd like to start by asking you a question. In Cameron's introduction, he referenced all the different types of stories you've told as a filmmaker. Why did you want to tell Forrest's story? He reminded me of myself in that oh dear. I just like doing what I do, and I don't quit. Um, your approach to this story and the genre in general is a little quieter than, than we've seen in most sort of heist films. Can you talk a little bit about the decisions you made and, and why you told it this way. I love crime films as a genre, and in preparation for this, over the years that I was working on the project, I watched all of the classics, you know, and I realized that, you know, I couldn't touch them with a 10-foot pole, and so I decided to try to just veer off in a different direction. I'm a very quiet person, as I think everybody here can probably attest to, and I like to just, you know, color outside the lines a little bit. And I just thought, you know, rather than follow the traditional beats of a cops and robbers movie, what if we just tried to do something a little bit more different, a little bit more unexpected? And, you know, I still wanted to honor the genre that we were playing in, but I wanted to just sort of veer around the edges in a slightly different fashion. And so, once again, I've made a, a bank robbing movie where you don't really see the bank robberies, <laughs> except for one, we do one in this one. And, uh, and I really wanted to just, you know, kind of be, I don't know, just follow the, follow whatever, I always try, when I make movies, I just try to think of like, when I'm sitting down in the cinema to see something, like, what would I want to see? And every step of the way, I was just thinking, okay, what have I seen before, and what can I do differently? How can I just kind of like, step slightly to the left of what I might expect normally in a heist film? Um, okay, yes, he does a good job of it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, um, I guess it worked. <laughs> A question for Robert. This is uh, such an iconic kind of American cinema figure that you play, um, but it, again, is very different than the traditional bank robbers that we've seen. I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit about why this character appealed to you. Thanks, Casey. Um, well, it just fit with my sensibility. Um, I've always been attracted to the idea of outlaws from the time I was a kid. <laughs> And I've played that out in my work a lot, so this just followed suit. And beside that, I don't think, I think we should let other people talk. <laughs> well, what would you like to know? Um, I love you. Um, maybe, maybe a question for the rest of the cast. Uh, you haven't worked together before. Can you maybe talk a little bit about what the experience was like and how you prepared together? Okay. 
Hi. <laughs> um, you know, uh, David and I talked about Maureen, and he offered me the job, and I was super excited. One, because of the script, and um, two, because of the fantastical cast, and I was just enamored by all of them. And so I came into this, like, while they were still shooting, and the crew and everything, they worked on other things together, but they just welcomed me with open arms, and it felt like one big happy family. Like, I loved working with Casey. He and I, uh, we just, like, got along so well, and he made me laugh most of the time. And I knocked on Bob's door, uh, Robert Redford, and I'm like, you don't understand how amazing, like, how you've affected my life. My movie got in Sundance, and, you, you know, and he was like, oh, okay, you know. <laughs> You know, and to work with Danny Glover and Sissy Spade. I mean, this is just a dream for me. So to be in any part of this beautiful story, I'm just super grateful. So thank you, guys. Sissy or Danny, would you like to talk about the experience of working together? For me? Mm-hmm. <laughs> working with who, Bob? Yes, that would be lovely. Talk well, about that Well, it was experience. great. We never rehearsed. We just kind of sat down and did it. It was like With this. I was like, I was like, oh, you, they were sitting there. I'm like, oh, action. The film. <laughs> oh, I, I didn't hear the question. <clears throat> you said we just stopped. We just sat down and did it. You have to explain what that means. Oh, oh, oh we just sat down and did the scenes as written. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I think David basically worked with most all of us separately for a long time before the before we even got to the yeah the I, I would just talk you know either on the phone or on Skype or in person we would just talk about it and I was just kind of crossing my fingers that the that we wouldn't change our minds that you wouldn't change your minds <laughs> and also that the chemistry that I anticipated existing between everybody would actually be there on the day. Well, that worked. If I could. <laughs> I could add one one um, point here uh, that w- was attractive to me, and, and that had to do with <clears throat> the relationship that I had with Casey Affleck. Um, what he represented was the predator, and I represented the prey, and that's always attracted to me. And it, I've always been very attracted to the idea of the dynamic between predator and prey, because <clears throat> the prey knows the predator is going to come after him. And the predator knows he's going to eventually get him. But in that contest, there's a mutual understanding that becomes almost, almost like a friendship, where you understand each other. You say, OK, I understand what's going to go on here, so maybe we can enjoy it. And, th- and that's how I felt <coughs> about working with Casey's character, that he was after me, and I was going to go away from him. But in the course of it, there was this kind of weird I don't want to say affection, but respect that developed. And I've always been attracted to that concept. To jump on that, we, you know, the real John Hunt, who Casey plays, uh, was integral in putting this movie together and, and, you know, telling me about the true story that has happened. And he, that was something he said. He said, like, back in his heyday, the best part of his life was when he was chasing really good bank robbers because they made him a better cop. Um, you, uh, it's, so, Casey and Robert, your characters aren't on screen together a lot, but there's a few really pivotal scenes um, that I think really capture the heart of that sort of predator-prey, almost like friendship that evolves. I'm wondering, Casey, maybe you can talk a little bit about what it was like to prepare for those scenes and, and the character in general. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I think you're seeing a little bit on the stage more or less what it was like on set, basically. Um, I would listen to Robert talk about my character, and I'd think, okay, I'm going to do that. Uh, <laughs> and, um, and then Tika would just be, like, joyful and happy and make everyone feel good, and, and I would kind of wonder what Danny was thinking, and Sissy would crack some jokes, and uh, this, this is one of the best Q&As I've ever been, ever been a part of, because I think you're actually seeing what it was like to make the movie. Um, He's not lying. I mean, it was, it, we tried to foster this environment on set yeah. as much as possible. <laughs> Um, and I'd never worked with any, any, of these, any of these people. These three I, would, I had seen probably like Tika back when I was you know, a kid when movies were still a very private, intimate thing. And 
you don't think about them the way you do when you're work, you know, a grown up working on them. And so I was totally, they were just these giants, these sort of mm -hmm. mythical things. And then you get to know them and you're on set and you're working with them and they're real people and you have to interact with them in a, uh, in a real way. And they were all so incredibly uh, inclusive and warm that um, you just fall into their embrace. And, um, and David was someone who I had worked with a few times. And so one of the things that like, the first time you work with someone who you respect, there's always a little bit of uh, some concern that what's going to happen when you fail and how are they going to accept that. And I've worked with David a few times and he's seen me, you know, I'd fall on my face and make a fool of myself and fail in innumerable ways. And he hired me again. So <laughs> I kind of thought like, I guess it's safe, safe ground here. I can make an ass of myself and it'll be okay. Um, and we usually don't put it in the movie. Right. We usually keep it. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's a real sort of ode to the history of cinema and you know this genre and these characters in the storytelling um, and including in the visual style and I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit about the development of that and the choices you made. I think the fact that we would, sh you know, the, the, the idea to shoot this on super 16 millimeter was in the script. Like that was one of those things that you just always know is going to be part of the film because we wanted it to, you know, I didn't want the film to feel like steeped in, you know, honey dude nostalgia, but I wanted it to feel old fashioned and I wanted it to feel as if it was made in a different era and the best way to do that is to use the technology that existed back then. So we just tried to make it the way a movie would have been made in the late 70s or early 80s. You know, everything from the, the um, ob obviously when you're doing the production design and the costumes, like the, everything's from that era, but you know, the, the equipment we were using, we were trying to find just like a more old fashioned way to approach the actual production of the movie. And that really, you know, when you have, it's, it's easy to romanticize shooting on film because it's, it's just something that cineasts will do. But there's a very tangible thing that happens when you're on set and you hear the film whirling through the camera. Like everybody just takes it a little bit more seriously because you just know that something is being captured at that moment that is going to run out of time soon. And so that really just lent a, you know, an aesthetic to the production itself. Like everybody just had that mindset and we approached it in that very specific way. Um, we've talked a lot about the collaborative process on set and the dynamic you all had. I'm wondering what came first, the uh, idea for this movie or the idea to work with Robert and everybody else in this capacity? How did you put it all together? Well, Bob brought the movie to me, or the David Grand's article. You, you, you brought that to me, and I um, was like, of course I will do this. This sounds like a great, a great plan. Let's do this. Let's make this movie. And... Um, we spent a number of years developing the script and it went through a number of different drafts and I, you know, just over the course of that period made a couple other movies including Pete's Dragon where I got to work with Bob and, and that was a real luxury because you know, it's always wonderful to get to know someone in that capacity and once we finished that film I was able to rewrite the script just, you know, I was a, I, at that point I felt like I knew you as a friend so I was able to rewrite the script specifically for you and as soon as Pete's Dragon was done, we just, you know, got the rest of this cast together and, uh, and went off to make it. Well, we're so glad you did make it. Um, that is all we're going to have time for today. But congratulations again on coming with the film. Thank being you. Here. Thank you all for staying. Thank you all so much.